I want to talk briefly about a lab technique called fractional precipitation that actually takes advantage of some of the things that we've been talking about with KSP, the solubility product constants for equilibrium, thinking about these solid or fairly insoluble solids that are dissolved in solution, and that there's this relationship between how much solid is going into solution and how much is precipitating out. And kind of that balance between the two, that equilibrium can be uh, messed with in different ways. And actually by messing with it, that's one of the ways that we can actually separate out some of these ions. And that's really what fractional precipitation is all about as a technique. There's lots of different ways that we can separate ions. Um, chromatography, there's various types of chromatography, which allows for ions to move kind of based on size and charge and all sorts of other factors, depending on what it is that you're using to separate them. This technique, fractional precipitation, is the strategic addition of something to a system. So let's say I have some ions in solution like this. I have magnesium and zinc here. And if I strategically add something to it that can react with both, then if I know certain things about the compounds that can form for each of these ions, then I could potentially precipitate one set of ions out at a time. So I only have two here in my system, but you could use this for a number of different ions. So let's, for example, take uh, magnesium and zinc, which can both make hydroxides. So if we know the KSP values for each of these, then if I was to add a base to this, then using fractional precipitation, one of these, if they have different KSP values, is going to come out of solution. It's going to precipitate out of solution faster than the other. So uh, I looked up the KSP values for these, and magnesium hydroxides is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 11th, and the KSP value for zinc hydroxide is 2.1 times 10 to the negative 16th. So based on what we know about KSP, if we're comparing the two, the KSP value for zinc hydroxide is significantly smaller than magnesium hydroxide. So if I was to add a strong base to this, so let's add sodium hydroxide or lye or caustic soda, all of them mean the same thing. So we put sodium hydroxide in here. The hydroxide ions are going to react with both the magnesium and the zinc, but which one is going to precipitate out first? Well, the one that's going to precipitate out first is going to be the one that wants to be a solid more, that wants to be ions less. And so the one that wants to have, um, wants to dissolve less in solution is obviously the one with the smaller KSP value. So my zinc hydroxide would precipitate out first. So that means that selectively, and of course everything is all about a balance of energy, but selectively, then our zinc hydroxide is going to come out of solution because it wants to be a solid. It doesn't want to be ions in solution if it has the opportunity to be zinc hydroxide, and it's going to do that um, in a preferential way. Um, compared to the magnesium. So zinc hydroxide will form much faster than the magnesium hydroxide because of this drive towards equilibrium and this drive towards um, staying more as a solid. So then we'd end up with some solid at the bottom and the solid at the bottom of my beaker then is going to be that zinc hydroxide first. That's not to say that the magnesium hydroxide wouldn't react. It would still be reacting. Um, it just would preferentially prefer to be reacting with the zinc than it would with the magnesium. So the greater amount of this, this powder at the end, the greater amount of this precipitate at the end is going to be your zinc hydroxide. So this is just another way that we can utilize this information, especially in a lab experimental kind of context um, that has some practical applications.